On our diet, we do permit you to have a certain amount of animal protein, fish and fowl, uh, but we have to be careful about animal protein because of cholesterol. Cholesterol is a real problem. We're going to discuss that on heart disease. But I should tell you this, that if you eat more cholesterol than you lose through your body every day, the excess will pile up in your tissues, your organs, in your arteries, all over your body and destroy you. As it piles up in your arteries, you know what happens there. You grow sort of a cholesterol boil that we call a plaque. And as this boil grows inside your arteries, especially your coronary arteries that lead to your heart, the more the boil grows, the less room there is for blood to flow. And gradually it chokes up your blood supply and you can die of what we call heart disease. Now heart disease is a bad name because you people might think that there's something wrong with your heart. Well, there's nothing wrong with your heart unless you've had a heart attack. The problem with heart disease is not the heart. It's the coronary arteries, the little vessels that are meant to feed the heart is blood because the heart is only a muscle, like the calf muscle or your arm muscle, and what it requires is blood to do its work. And if you don't have enough blood flowing through your coronary arteries, the heart can't work, and it cries out in great pain. We call that angina. So that heart disease is the narrowing or closing of your arteries with these cholesterol boils that come from eating too much cholesterol. Now, how much cholesterol is there in food, and where do you find it? The only foods that have cholesterol are those that we call the animal protein foods. Animal protein or animal foods uh, uh, comprise any foods that do not have roots. Uh, if it doesn't grow in the ground, it's an animal protein. Animal protein ranges from cows, lambs, cockroaches, houseflies, anything that doesn't have roots is an animal protein. And the amount of cholesterol varies in these. Now, the most amount of cholesterol that you can eat is no more than what you lose every day. Now, the major use for cholesterol in the body is to make bile. Bile is digestive juice that's used to help digest fat in the body. And probably 70% of the production of cholesterol is used to make bile. Now, it's so hard to make it that the bile, as it goes through the small intestine, is recaptured at the end of the small intestine and it's re brought back to the liver where it's reused. But the body isn't completely efficient, so about 5 or 10% of the bile gets, doesn't recapture and goes on through the large intestine and out with the bowel movement. This bile that goes out is the only way you can lose cholesterol. And the amount of loss you have every day is equivalent to amount of cholesterol in about a pound or a pound and a half of fish or fowl a week. If you eat more than that, it stores in your body and creates these terrible problems like gallstones, uh, cholesterol boils in your arteries that we call plaques, and all other kinds of consequences of too much cholesterol. So that we have to limit cholesterol to no more than you lose every day. To give you an idea now of which animal products create problems, egg yolks are very, very rich in cholesterol. Therefore, we cannot use them in our diet. One egg yolk has as much cholesterol as a half a pound of steak. So if you eat a three-egg omelet, you're eating a pound and a half of steak in cholesterol. And as far as various organ meats and so on, chicken liver has ten times more cholesterol per ounce than chicken, than white of chicken, white meat of chicken. So you certainly don't want to eat the organ meats because they'll just overwhelm your body <clears throat> with cholesterol. Perhaps the highest amount of cholesterol content that's commonly eating, uh, eaten is in the brain. The, uh, animals' brains have 25 times more cholesterol than white meat of chicken or white meat of turkey. So you can't have that. The best thing to do is to stay away from all organ meats. Stay with the white meat of chicken, white meat of turkey, and you can have uh, many fishes. The white meat of turkey and chicken are about 20% of the total calories and fat, about 80% protein. And if you add two to three ounces a day as an average for a week, that's about the maximum you can have. As far as fish is concerned, most fish is all right. Most fish is rather low in fat. Uh, tuna, for example, is only 6% total calories in fat. That's if it's water-packed. But if you have oil-packed tuna, it's 10 times more in fat than water-packed tuna. And you can't wash the oil off of oil-packed oil tuna. 
So your best bet is just to get water packed and give up the idea of oil packed tuna. As far as the other normal fishes, codfish, many other fishes are fine. Now, one fish that we use, salmon, is about 50% of its total calories and fat. But it has such a strong flavor, we're able to use it anyway. Because even a quarter ounce of salmon can make up one salmon patty. It has such a strong flavor, it carries through the whole patty. And so we use it in our recipes. So fish is fine, fowl is fine, and you have to be careful of the fatty meats, like feedlot beef. Regular steaks, beef cuts, and so on, unfortunately are artificially fattened. In the feedlot process, they force feed these animals, giving them special chemicals to make them grow more fat between their muscle tissues, and it's a, uh, an unfortunate uh, event then for those who eat it. Because the average beef animal, if permitted to range feed or grass feed, they only have one-fifth as much fat in their body as a feedlot animal. And you can't get the fat out of the uh, meat in a feedlot animal. You may think you're cutting it out around the steaks and so on, but the fat is in the marbling. In between the muscle fibers, you see those streaks of fat. You can't take that out. That's there to stay. And if you broil it and you say, well, it disappeared during broiling, it didn't disappear. It melted. You can't see it. Let it cool in your plate, and it'll all come back when it solidifies. Now you're eating a tremendous amount of fat. In a good club steak and so on, you're eating 80% of the total calories and fat. If you want to get a really good filet, you could be eating 85, 87% of the total calories and fat, only 12% protein. A slice of bread has more protein than a good filet. So that, don't look upon it as a protein dish. Look upon it as a fat dish, with as much fat as butter has. 82% total calories and fat. So as far as animal protein is concerned, most modern animal protein is just distorted to fill it with fat. It's like the old days when a goose was force-fed to give it a fatty liver. That was considered a delicacy. Well, we understand now that it is an unfortunate occurrence because it makes man sick.